We haven't had that price in three years, and it's uh, getting very, very close to new all-time highs, of course. And, of course, when it breaks through new all-time highs, that would trigger a lot of buy-stop orders. People will pile in in an aggressive way. You'll see it pop to 100000 This will trigger institutional fear of missing out or FOMO on a major scale. We're seeing that now happen in the banks, the institutions, the hedge funds. So they're going to come in with these huge orders. I saw somebody noticing that there was a huge multi-billion dollar trade just in the last 48 hours, and they paid something like buck and a quarter in fees and it's the magic of bitcoin so this is now getting into i would say the second inning of this leg of the big bull market this this particular phase of uh, the bull market in today's episode we're delving into the insights of max kaiser a leading figure in the cryptocurrency realm as he illuminates the present condition of big ramifications, does this hold for individual investors and the broader market? Stay tuned as we investigate the implications of this bullish market phase. This is a problem every investor has. I think it was Peter Lynch, famous money manager over there at Fidelity Magellan Fund, who in one of his books, he talks about the fact that most people do more research researching a refrigerator to buy than they do researching the stocks that they're gonna buy. And people tend to buy stocks um, without doing a lot of research. They hear somebody talk about it and they buy some. And so they don't really know why they're buying it. Uh, they like when the price goes up, but when the price goes down, they're like, you know what? I have no idea why I own this thing. I'm gonna sell it because they never took the time to learn about it and get educated by it. So they lack conviction. If you spend the time learning about it and educate yourself about Bitcoin and your conviction goes up, then every time the price goes down, you see it as a buying opportunity. You see it as something that's valuable, that's on sale. Another interesting observation, it could have been Peter Lynch as well, who said that the stock market is, more, is a very strange place because it's the only market in the world where when things go on sale, people run away from the price. <laughs> Usually if you're, if you're at Walmart or some big store and think something's on sale, 30% off, you're like, oh, great, I'm going to stock up right now. This is the opposite in the stock market. So um, this is uh, not unexpected, what you're describing there. And the best way to avoid dumping at the inappropriate time and, and to start stacking is to simply increase your conviction, which comes through education. And fortunately, there's so much information out there that it's not hard to put 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 hours or 1,000 hours into this and uh, get your conviction up high. Paul Tudor Jones, I remember when he got into it, he's a, he's a legendary trader and he went on CNBC and talked about it. And, and, and the impact of the core owners and buyers of Bitcoin, the network effect, and Michael Saylor talked about this as well, the cyber hornets, as he calls them, and the hodlers. And there's a core kind of floor to Bitcoin. You know, during the era of the central bank supremacy, which is uh, from 1980 to 19. 22, so a 42 year reign of central banks in the world, there was something called the Greenspan put, which is that every time markets go down, the central banker, this was started by Alan Greenspan, would lower interest rates and bail out Wall Street. So they kind of like took a new direction for the Fed. The Fed, that wasn't really the Fed's job until we saw this phenomenon take place during the Greenspan years. And it's continued all the way up through current Fed chairman. Well, with Bitcoin, you have what's called really the Michael Saylor put, mm -hmm. or let's call it the Larry Fink put. So every time the price, you see some price weakness, these guys come in with huge orders. So you've got huge orders coming in on any price weakness. And that's the floor. Like the floor is established. It's not going to go beneath that floor because these bids are stacked up to buy the Bitcoin. And because they know now the jig is up. I mean, I would say this year now, finally, this, the major global institutional money understands now without any equivocation that Bitcoin is going to swallow the Forex market the same way the software industry swallowed the global industrial base, right? Every mm -hmm. software ate the world, right? Everything runs on software. And that started in the really the 1970s. And then uh, Microsoft and Apple went public in the early 1980s. I was a stockbroker at the time. And the information age and software ate the world. And you see those great photos of here's the 30 things you used to carry around with you 
which are now on your phone, right? So it's like it totally transformed everything. Well, Bitcoin is eating the Forex market. It's eating the global kind of investment store of value, store of value and investment market, which is approximately $400 trillion in size. So even at one and a half trillion dollars in market cap, it still has a huge runway ahead of it. And once people who manage money professionally understand that, they have to start buying it. It's their fiduciary responsibility to get exposure to this asset class. If they do not, they would be subject to really um, anger from their clients who would say mm -hmm. you're violating your fiduciary responsibility <laughs> because we have no Bitcoin in the account and you've deprived us of that performance. So now you've got that all kicking in. People on Wall Street, people in finance can push a button and make markets go up, markets go down. Yeah. And um, this is um, probably not well understood that... Um, they call it program trading. That's a common phrase, but program trading is just really market manipulation or high frequency trading is another form of market manipulation. And it all started in 1987. In 1987, there was a massive crash, a 21, 22% intraday crash of the stock market in the United States. And the lessons learned from that crash is that, my God, you know, that accidental crash, and it, what happened was the computers in New York and the computers in Chicago got into contentious doom loop, if you will, and they were feeding off each other, and you had this crash, this epic crash. And what the lesson learned was, you know what, that was an accident, but what if we could do that on purpose? You know, if we can make markets drop 20% or rise 20% by this computer manipulation and information manipulation, you know, it gives us incredible power. And since that time, and by the way, in the 1997 crash, it was the first time in history that the federal government stepped in and started buying S&P futures contracts to bail out the stock market. So price discovery ended on October, you know, the day after, the Monday after the Friday of, of the stock market crash. Pippa Malgram, who's a market observer and writes a lot, has done some work on this and talks a lot about how the s p futures contracts purchased by the federal government kind of ended free markets in america so a lot of people say you know capitalism sucks well we don't have capitalism we have something different and anyway so the markets are manipulated in this way the long-term trend you know you can't stop it like the markets are on a longer term trend they will kind of seek out value as uh, Warren Buffett says, I believe it, the, the phrase is, in the short term, markets are a voting machine. In the long term, markets are a weighing machine. Uh, but in, in the interim, you get the volatility. And that volatility, 90% of it is, is, is synthetic. It's created by players on Wall Street who are capturing the gains for themselves. And that money, of course, goes into lobbying Washington to pass more laws to make it easier to manipulate the stock market. So this is the doom loop we're in right now well, financiers that have completely undermined the economy. And the result is incredible dysfunction and dislocation and wealth concentration, the dangerous wealth con con concentration that we're experiencing now.